getting better. Uh, uh, the, the, the battle is getting more intense. Amen? That should not scare us. That should not scare us. Because we are equipped to win. The Bible says we are more than overcomers. We, 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 we got power. We got authority. But you know what, what, I, what hurts me? What, 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 what really... Uh, uh, what, what it gets me upset is to see the people of God with all that we are equipped with, with all the power, the authority, with all the declarations we could pro, you know, proclaim, declare, God's people are going down. And it shouldn't be that way. Amen. This morning what I want to uh, minister on, I, I want to minister a, 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 a short series on spiritual warfare. And I'm going to minister on, 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 on things. You're going to hear things probably that uh, uh, you already know. We will be looking at s s different areas concerning spiritual warfare. And, and, and uh, I, I want to try something. You, you, it, it's, this may be refreshing to some. Maybe to some of you, uh, you, you, you will have to, uh, uh, you, you might see that you are involved in spiritual warfare. And you've got to fight back. Uh, uh, in, in the many years of pastoring, I learned that no matter how many years a person has been serving the Lord, they can lose sight of the spiritual warfare that's taking place in their life, I, including myself. There's many times that I experience things in my life with my kids, with physically and all these things, and, and I have to acknowledge that, man, the devil is trying to take me down. Amen. And, and see, that's what I'm trying to get you to see here. And let me tell you something. Those of you that, I mean, anybody here that when you go out of church and, 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 and you're a different person and, and you're worldly and all that, you're worldly, and you're worldly but, but you know what? Things aren't happening. Things aren't going down for you, so you think everything okay. It's not okay. Amen. There's a fight. You've got to draw a line. Amen. Yeah. You might say, well, there he goes again, and that is right. Here I go again. Our enemy has only one goal in mind, and that's to take you out, to take you out of the will of God, to take you out of where you're supposed to be, and eventually send you to hell. That ought to concern you. And he will use spiritual strategies to do that. The title of the series today is The Reality of War. And I'm just going to read three verses out of Ephesians 3, 6, 10, 11, and 12. And, and this is what Paul is saying. Finally, and, and you know if you read verses 9, I mean uh, the verses before, that you, you'll see what he's talking about when he comes to, the, to this. Finally, my brothers, my brethren, he says, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It says, put on the whole armor of God. We're not going to talk about that today, but put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against husband and wife, brother and sister, one another in church, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. But let me try something. Don't let that scare you. Because this morning I declare, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let's give him a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Thank you, Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah, Robo Bobo Sharaba Sanda. Thank you, Lord, we worship you. Thank you, Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Amen. 
I want to look at the reality of, of the Christian fight. The reality of the Christian fight. Uh, let me say to you, every born-again believer will engage in spiritual warfare. There is no neutral ground. When you give your life to Jesus, you have to walk away from the devil, and he does not like that. The only way the devil could get, mad, could get, get at God is to take one of his people down. Amen? Yes, amen. We are in warfare. warfare. Warfare is real. Paul tells us to stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh, uh, Brother Ben brought this out one time. The word wild mean, wiles means a, a cunning device. It means a subtle strategy. Subtle means that you don't see it coming but it comes. We need to understand that the devil, the dirty fighter, the, the devil hates the fact that we are now children of God. And he will do everything in his power to try and take us out. He's a smooth operator. Amen? He's a smooth operator. Someone said these words, when God opens the windows from heaven to bless us, the devil will open the door to hell to blast us. When God smiles, the devil frowns. See, Paul understood spiritual warfare. And, and that's why he wrote this letter to the Ephesian church. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, Paul wants to, he wanted to encourage uh, the, the, the church there to be aware of the wall of Satan. He also wrote a letter to the Corinthian church. And this is what he said to them in 2 Corinthians 2.11. Lest, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And what he was dealing with them about is that that church was dealing with, with uh, 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 unforgiveness. That, word was, that church was dealing with inward struggles. They were dealing with people probably in the church, and he was telling them, telling them, hey, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Most Christians don't realize that each day it, there's a strategy set up against us. Can you say amen? He'll attack your body. He'll attack the church. He'll attack your home. He'll attack your marriage. You need to understand that the fight is not with husband and wife. The fight is not against uh, uh, people at work. The fight is not against people at church. The, what's happening is that there's a strategy taking place and you need to wake up. You need to be aware of it and you need to fight it. Our Christian experience involves a fight that sometimes brings pain, uh, tears, and fear. But if we fight this fight wisely, it also brings victory. Can you say amen? It brings victory. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, 12 says this, Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.3 says this, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness, man. Don't quit. Don't flake off. It may, it's going to get tough at times. Can you say amen? It's going to get tough. But don't give up. Don't be a flake. Fight. Take hold of eternal life. The moment you accept Jesus Christ in your life, you are involved in spiritual warfare. Amen? Amen. This is a war between two powers. It's between God and the devil. Good and evil. Uh, 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 light versus darkness. Spirit versus flesh. And, and we need to understand this, church. Ephesians 6, 12, we read, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, against, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I don't know if anyone here had an argument 
a disagreement. Okay, a fight. <laughs> as you were getting ready for church, as you were on your way to church, l l let me tell you something. There, there's so much of this that goes on and we laugh right now, but it's true. These things happen. I, I mean, I'm not, that didn't happen in my house today. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I'll tell you this word, uh, uh, the devil is subtle. He's subtle. And, and, and you know what? You, you, you never, you, you know, you, you never have an argument when there's a Super Bowl. Can okay, you say amen? You, you never have a, a, an argument when you're, you're going to do something for yourself. Everybody's happy. You even like people that don't like you or, or you know. But, but let me tell you something. We need to understand that the devil is not playing. He doesn't want you to come to church to hear the word of God. He doesn't want you to come to, to church and, 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 and know what's going on, to be blessed. Uh, 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 you know, what happens is we went from darkness to light, and, and everyone is on one side or the other. Ask yourself, I'm not, don't tell me. It, it doesn't matter to me. It, matter, it should matter to you. What side are you on? What side are you on? There's God's side, there's uh, the devil's side, there's heaven's side, there's hell's side. You, 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 what side are you on? Because let me tell you something, when we enter eternity, we're going we're gonna to go whatever side we gave our life for. Can you say amen? Satan's goal is to take us back to darkness, to, 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 to uh, take us back to our sinful ways. He, he's going to take his best shot to try to destroy mankind. And he will use sin and the power of the darkness uh, to try and, and, and do that. Paul lets us know that we are going to wrestle with something. And let me tell you something. When you think about wrestling, you're, you're thinking about a struggle. Can you say amen? When you see people wrestling, you, 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 see, you see the one that's, that's got, uh, 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 you know, one, the opponent got him by the neck, won't, won't, won't uh, uh, let him out, uh, make, uh, doing something. And, and once that person goes, you lost. Well, don't, if you're going to do this, let that be you hitting the devil upside the head. Can you say amen? <laughs> Satan uses many forms of strategies, many forms of, uh, 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 of tactics in wrestling with us. He uses trials. He uses temptations. He uses persecutions. He'll use sickness. He'll use disease. He'll use opposition. We, we don't realize it, church, when we go day by day, day by day, and, and, and we're being tempted. We're being, we're, we're, we're being uh, 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 you, know, you know, just things uh, uh, hitting our body, our marriage, our whole, all these things, our kids going, you know, our kids doing this and all that. You know what? That's the devil trying to, to take us down. And through, the, through these things, we're given a warning as to what to do. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion look, looking for someone to devour. And he says, Stand firm against them and be strong in your youth. Church, we are involved in spiritual warfare. Can you say amen? And let, let me give you an example in the Bible about a, an unseen attack. And, and that's Job. Here's a man that, that went through things. He went through things and, and, and uh, he went through things and, and Job did not know what was going on. Okay, uh, uh, well, let, let me read it. I was going to just share it and skip all the scriptures, but... Job 1 6. It's going to come on the screen so you can read it with me along. I mean, just look at it, read it. Job 1 6 says this Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? 
So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and walking back and, and forth on it. Then the Lord said to him, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? See, the Lord was bragging on Job. Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has and every, on every side? Have you blessed the work of his hands and his possession have increased in the land? But now stretch your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. You see what the devil was saying? He said, of course he worships you. Of course he loves you. Look at what you've done for him. You know what? You bless everything he does. And, 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 and look, he, his family's got all these things. Of course, but you take all those things away from him and see if he won't curse you. See, let me tell you something. First of all, God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. God's going to bless uh, uh, your marriage. I'm talking about you living for God. God's going to bless your marriage. He's going to prosper you. But, but, but this is what you need to be careful of. Be careful when you're blessed. Because you're a target. The more you're blessed, the more the devil hates you. And what's going to happen... What's going to happen, you know what, he's going to, uh, what's going to happen, uh, uh, he's going to try and take you down. But this is what the Lord said to hate Satan. Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. And, and, and okay, there goes Satan. Uh, he does a work on, on Job. Uh, 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 there's a spiritual attack on his life. He has no idea what's going on. You read the story. Uh, he gets a messenger say, you know, your kids all died. Uh, uh, your, your flocks are all gone. Everything you have is, you know, it, it, it's, and, and, and Job is supposed to be mad at God. Job is supposed to say, why, Lord? Why? I don't know. Why? I, I, you know, I worship you. I praise you. I tithe. I'm faithful. Why? That's what Job is supposed to do. That's what, devil, that's what the devil wants Job to do. Job, Job loses his, his property, children. He has, he, uh, Satan attacks his, his health. And, but, but you know what? But, and Job had no idea of why this was happening. But in, in Job, Job 122, this is what the Bible says about Job. Not once through all this did Job sin. Not once did he blame God. God is good, amen? amen. Uh, and I was, I hate to talk about myself uh, because, well, it's not that I'm talking about myself, but I want to give God some glory here. You, you know, this last uh, week and a half or whatever, I, I was in pain. I, I prayed, and, you, you know, things don't happen now, but you know what? I, I told my wife, not once, because I, I, I just had finished my message, and I was supposed to preach last week, but I couldn't. But not once, not once did I question God. Not once. I told God, you know, God, I still love you. I still praise you. I worship you. It, it was because I think I, got, I worked on this message that I was reminded of Job. I said, and Lord, why should I complain? Why should I complain? Because compared to Job, ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> That's how I comfort myself. I'm not going to be a little wimp. I'm not going to be a little crybaby. I'm going to trust you and I'm going to love you. 
Many Christians face similar battles like Job today. We face the same devil that Job faced. Uh, we have to face attacks on our family. We have to face attacks. Uh, we have to face. We have to face conflict and sickness and and depression and oppression. I, I tell you what, we, we we may all face some of those or all of those, but I want to tell you something. These are uh, attacks. We we will face attacks on our uh, on material things, on our position possessions, uh, our loss of jobs. Maybe we 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 could face uh, financial debt. We're going to be attacked on our morals. On, we're going to have temptations. Uh, there's going to be lust, pornography. All these things are going to come at us. But let me tell you something. We need to remember that Satan is behind it. Amen. Satan is trying to get us back to go to our uh, carnal mind, our carnal way. He's getting us to, to have an appetite for the things that God already had delivered us from. If you find yourself that you're not worshiping God anymore because you're doing other things, I want to tell you something. The devil got a, a, a stronghold on you, but you're, you're still alive. You're still here this morning. You, you, can, you, you can rebeat that. You can release yourself from that. But you got to give your life to Jesus, and you got to just walk away from what you know is wrong. It's a demonic strategy at work when we are afflicted that way. The word strategy means planning the best way to gain an advantage or achieve success, especially in war. Synonyms for uh, the word uh, strategy is it's a blueprint, a blueprint, a game plan, a scheme. That's what the devil does. He has strategies. He, he, he has blueprints. He, has, he, he studies us. If you remember the message I did on the, uh, on the master trophy hunter, he studies where we go. He studies what we look at. He studies what we say. He studies that. And, 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 and he's, that's how he sets up a trap to take us down using the very things that we are attracted to. That's why when you see something, when you hear something, when, 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 when something causes your flesh to wake up, you need to be careful and walk far away from it. Yeah. Amen. 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 Paul refers to these strategies as wild of the devil. In Ephesians 6, 11, he says that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Our battles are spiritual. Second uh, Corinthians ten three says, "For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh." Satan's strategies are not new, church. His strategies are not new; they are just well used. Amen. He, they are just well used. He knows how to maneuver his way into position. L let, me, let me wind this down, uh, bringing a, 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 a Samson. Samson had it together. He had everything going for him. He was powerful. He was good looking. He had supernatural power. He had everything that we pray for today. Can you say amen? Supernatural power, even being good looking. Amen? <laughs> he did great works for God. He took down a lion with his bare hands. Even the Philistines were no match for him. But the problem with Samson is that he was ignorant to the strategy of the devil. This is what the devil tells us about that. First Corinthians 10, 12 says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he falls. See, Samson had it together. He, every, you know, he was powerful. He could take anybody out. But let me tell you something. He, 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 he forgot. He, he, you know, he... he uh, he thought he had it all together. He got all puffed up. 
The Bible says, take heed, wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. In the, in the message Bible it says this, don't be so naive and self-confident, you're not exempt, you could fall flat on your face as, e as easily as anyone else. Forget about self-confidence, it's useless, cultivate God confidence. Samson did not take heed, but let me tell you something. Neither do we at times. Neither do we at times. How many times have we been in places doing things we shouldn't be doing? Uh, uh, all the things, and we know it's wrong. We're not taking heed. And let me tell you something. When you're, not, when you're not careful, when you don't care, when you're just taking chances, let me tell you something. You open a door to your life for the devil to come in and, and start working on you and eventually take you out. Amen. You may attend church. But you aren't coming to God. It's all about God, church. It's all about God. Samson took honey from a dead carcass lying on the road. Well, what's so big about that? Well, touching a dead person or a dead animal was forbidden. Samson knew that. If you read the Bible, you could get the picture. He, he's just walking there. He's seeing, he's seeing a dead carcass, and, and, and he took, I don't know what the honey had to do. I mean, why the honey was there, but, but he just ate honey off the dead carcass. Samson became a target once he did something that he shouldn't have done let me tell you something he became a target no one saw Samson do this let me tell you something no one has to see what you do but the devil is looking I don't have to see what you do behind closed doors I don't know I don't have to see what you do when you leave you do whatever you do. I don't have to see because you know what? I'm not God. I'm the preacher. I'm preaching the word of God. But I can guarantee you that God is looking, the devil is looking, and when you step into his territory, you are dead meat. Are you with me? We are no different than Samson coming to the honey when God said, don't you touch anything that is unclean. See, no one saw Samson do this, but let me say this. But the invisible effects, effects of the devil's strategy and spiritual warfare begun. Once you do something that you shouldn't be doing, once you start acting in ways that you shouldn't act, let me tell you something. You just open doors for the strategies of Satan to take work in your life. Are you with me? After he did that, after he did that, well, you know, uh, Samson was a player with the women. But after he did that, he fell with Delilah. Uh, she was not a Christian girl. He had no business with her. Even the parents told her, told them, you know, you shouldn't be over there. You, you, you can't mix with those people. But he wanted it anyway. He played with sin. Lying about the source of his power. Remember when the uh, Bible says that uh, uh, she kept asking him, how do you get your power, how do you get your power? Not because she wanted to know, because she was going to sell him out. Let me tell you something. Anytime you go into the world, you're going to be sold out. He went from being a strong, victorious warrior 
to a blind, bound, grinding beggar. Let me tell you something. The world will humiliate you. Amen? I don't know about you, but when I see people that aren't serving God anymore, that used to, they don't look the same. Oh, that, no, I'm not saying they look better. They lost something. They lost something. They act different. They smell different. They smile different. The world will take you down, man. Amen? This all begun with Samson. This all happened with him, with the strategy of Satan working on his life. And let me tell you something. We know that Samson regained power at the very end, but let me tell you something. We do not want to go where Samson did. He, 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 well, read the story. The point is we will always lose if we allow ourselves to become ignorant to his devices. James 4, 7 says this, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Amen? Let me close with this. Our victory is in trusting God. We need to trust God. We need to trust God. You don't, you, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't need nothing from the world. Uh, let, let me, uh, you know, I'm not broke. I'm not rich. I'm not broke. But man, today you hear billions of dollars in the lottery. You hear millions of dollars in the lottery. And sometimes I say, man, I should go get me a lottery ticket. I, <laughs> what's wrong with it anyway? You start, you start, uh, uh, and I'm talking to all you lottery players that need to repent, okay? <laughs> because let me tell you something. You ain't done nothing but lost. <laughs> if, if you got a dollar, you get excited. Can you say amen? And, and if you get a hundred, why well, you get real excited. But, but you know what? You, you get a hundred and you buy more money and, and you spend more money and you ain't winning nothing. Because if you want the billion dollar ticket, let me tell you what you'll do. You'll leave the church. You won't have time to be in church because you'll be in your boat and you'll be flying here and you go over there. And, and it's not, you're not going to fly someplace to go to church over there. No, you're going to go over there to because you, you got all the money you want. You got all the money you need to do what you should not do. <laughs> I'd rather be where I'm at right now, not doing bad, not rich. But not doing bad. I'm happy. I'm going to heaven. Yeah. Amen. I got money to pay my bills. <laughs> uh, this, this lottery thing was not in my notes, okay? It just came out, I, I think. <laughs> because you know who you are. <laughs> you you, you, you want to win the lottery? We'll give you a tithing envelope. That's right. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, our victory comes in trusting the Lord, okay? Romans 8.31 says, If God be for us, who can be against us? The book of Nehemiah, and, and, and uh, I'm not going to read it, but something short here. book of Nehemiah, a good example of victory in warfare, I say trust God. Nehemiah was a builder and a warrior. He set up to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. He was mocked and laughed at it every, every step of the way. We know the story. Nehemiah went and, and, and uh, he got permission to go and build the walls. And, 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 and as the walls were going up, there was a strategy set against him to stop him from building the walls. He was assaulted. They, 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 they lied to him. You know, the enemy told him, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, the devil, you, you know, it, it, they said the devil and the walls are too weak. If a fox ru runs across the wall, the wall will fall. You know what? But Nehemiah and the people continue to fight. They, they continue to fight the minor assaults, and they worked on the walls until they were built up. 
I've experienced this building this church when I first got here on, Ch on Charter Way. You know, I, I, I went to I went to meetings. I went to meetings where there were pastors there. I was a new pastor. I went to meetings. I told them, uh, I, I, you know, we have a church on Charter Way. And I, you know what they told me? You won't make it. I'll give you two, uh, two months. And you'll go back to L.A. I'm glad they told me that, cause that they gave me that got me mad. I, 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 I didn't go home to. I've been here 38 years, man, and, and I still ain't got back. <laughs> okay. I had people because you know when when I got here, then you know women with long dresses and guys with no mustaches and all that. They they told me my wife, you ain't saved, as we were witnessing to someone. And I told him, hey, man, you didn't save me. I know who saved me. We are saved. Amen. I don't care what we're Levi's. We are saved. <laughs> I had a big old mustache and, and all that. My wife had uh, Levi's on, too. <laughs> and I said, I know she's saved. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what happened to, to Nehemiah. He was mocked. He was mocked all the way. And, and, and he was told what was going to happen. And, and people laughed at him. And, and let me tell you what, what, what they did. Once the walls were going up, Sambalad and the other two guys, you know, they told him, hey, let's meet for coffee over here. All of a sudden, they want to distract you from your work. Getting back to the church, you know, it, it, it took a lot. We, we've had a lot of assaults. We, we, we had a lot of assaults, uh, not, not even from the world, not only from the world. We've had a lot of assaults from the church people. But you know what? We're going forward. We're going forward. We're going forward. And, and, and I was just telling this to the Lord. I was just telling this to the Lord because you know what? Uh, you, you see mega churches uh, on TV and you see all this, but I want to tell you something. I don't ever want be, to become no mega church. I don't ever want to become a big church if it's going to mean compromising and pleasing the people. What I want to do is I want to preach the word of God. I want to take talk about heaven. I want to talk about the hell. I want to talk about the love of God. I want to. I want to preach the word of God to help people get to heaven and get the hell out of them. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. That means the church might not even be mega, but it's all right because it'll be almighty. Because, because, because people that come to hear the word of God are because they're hungry. And let me tell you something. Some of you that play around with God, this is going to happen. You are either going to get saved and keep coming, or you're going to just drift out of here because you can't take it. Amen. You cannot serve two masters. You have to fight for your sanity when the devil lies to you. There's, there's been time I, I, I could relate to Job, uh, and not in his sufferings all the way, but I could relate to Nehemiah. There's been many times when my wife and I just went home in the car and, and didn't say nothing. Didn't say nothing. Fighting off assaults, fighting off attacks. Fighting off uh, 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 no finances, fighting off this, fighting off that. But let me tell you something. We never gave up. We never gave up. Because when we started talking, we started encouraging one another. And, and, and this is what I want to read as I bring it to a close. Philippians 4 8. Finally, brothers, whatever things are true, Whatever thing is noble, whatever thing is right, whatever thing is pure, whatever thing is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Okay, bottom line, we need to be determined to fight and win. What we are involved in is real, church. 
what God is building in your life, the devil is trying to come against it and tear it down. You must fight to win. Can you say amen? amen? Through all that we go through in life, we need to trust that God is with us. Do you receive that this morning? Give him praise. Hallelujah.